There's a phrase that gets tossed around in a lot of meditation retreats, noble silence. What they mean when they use it is that as you're meditating in the retreat, you don't want to talk to anybody, except for times when it's really necessary or you're having an interview with a teacher. And the kind of though, noble silence is when you're sitting there in the second jhana on up. In other words, you're not talking to yourself at all. If they could record the conversation in your mind, there wouldn't be anything to record. Now, for those of us sitting here, unless you reach the level of noble silence like that, you'll probably be talking to yourself through the hour. So you want to be very careful. What are you going to say to yourself? What things are worth saying and what things are not? After all, to get into concentration, you do have to talk yourself into it. And partly that's giving yourself a pep talk, reminding yourself this is something that human beings can do. And whether you've been successful with it in the past or not, that's not the issue. What's the issue is what you're going to do right now. And then you have to learn how to cajole yourself when it's necessary and flatter yourself. Sometimes yell at yourself, depending on what works. A lot of us have a lot of trouble with the voices in our mind, the voices we picked up from our parents, our teachers, school, the media. They're there, and they're chattering away, and they're saying things that are very unhelpful for the meditation. In some cases, just simply changing the topic, other times trying to discourage you. And you have to learn to turn the fact that the mind is talking to itself to your advantage. Reminding yourself that this is really where you want to be. You want to be sitting down meditating. You want to be with the breath. See what happens when you can stay with the breath. Try to get interested in the breath. Ask yourself questions about it. What are these breath sensations in the body? They're already there. It's a question of simply viewing them as breath sensations. This is where another type of fabrication comes in. It's called mental fabrication, sanya, or perception. You know, the words you use to label things, the images you use to present things to yourself. What kind of image is good to hold of the breath energy in the body? Do you want to be aware of the breath energy along the skin, or do you want to have it go deeper in through the different organs? That's your choice. Do you want to have it go up or down? Sometimes if you're feeling drowsy, you want to have it go up a bit. If you're feeling like too much upflowing energy is giving you a headache, or what one Zen master called the Zen sickness, this dullness in the head. That's when you want the energy to go down. So when you breathe in, think of the energy flowing down from the nose, past the mouth, down the throat. Don't think of it going up through the forehead or whatever. There are lots of ways you can label the energy to yourself and present a picture of it. And this is probably the most useful conversation you can be having right now, is what you can do to make the breath interesting. Because if it's just in, out, in, out, in, out, you're going to leave pretty soon. You'll be out. Who knows where? So that should be your top priority, learning how to make yourself interested in the breath. And as for the other voices that come along that try to discourage you, you have to realize it. These are your worst enemies. When you identify with the voices that say, I can't do this, this is too much for me. As the Buddha once said, the things that an enemy could do to you are nowhere near as bad as the things you can do to yourself. You can be your worst enemy, but you can also be your best friend. 
So which do you want it to be? There'll be part of you that says, I don't want to do this. I want to find some excuse for not burdening myself with this, telling myself I, I can't manage it, I can't cope. You've been listening to that voice for who knows how many lifetimes. Do you want to keep on listening to it? Or do you, as the texts say, want to realize something you've never realized before, to attain something you've never attained before? It's your choice. So look at the voices in the head. What are they doing to pull you away from the breath? You have to learn how to argue with them. One of the voices the Buddha mentions in the canon is the voice of vanity, concerned with what other people might think about you. If you're concerned with what other people might think about you, you're placing them in a position of power over you. They're the ones who are deciding what your life should be, what's important, what's not important. And you're not doing this for anyone else. This is one of the reasons why the Forest of Johns are very sparing in their praise when their students do well. Because if you're really doing well, you should realize, okay, this is good. I don't need anybody else to praise this or to admire this order. This is good in and of itself. In fact, John Lee once said that when you reach the noble attainments, one of the special things about them is nobody else knows. Because the things that other people know about are dangerous. They can try to take them from you or they can try to use you for their, for their aims. The Buddha said in that passage we chant again and again, this is something to be experienced by the the observant for themselves. In other words, each person who attains us attains it in a way that nobody else can, can know. That's what the really good things in life are like. So if you find that someone else's voice is coming in and you're trying to impress that voice or impress what you think of that person. And John Fung had a nice image. One time I was getting up to give my very first Dharma talk, and even though I wasn't going to be my own Dharma talk, I was going to be reading a John Lee. I still felt a little nervous about it. And he said, imagine you have a sword in your hand and there's anybody in the room who doesn't like what, what you're saying. You can cut off their heads. So if you find that there's anybody you're trying to please or trying to impress, visualize just your sword you can cut off the head. Then you can turn around and cut off your own head for the time. Make it fair. Because the problem really, of course, is not with that person. The problem is with your perception of that person, your desire to impress the person. This is what the Buddha calls conceit. You're comparing yourself with other people. And other people's suffering at the moment is not your issue. Other people's happiness, other people's abilities or lack of abilities, these are not the issues right now. The issues are your own ability or lack of ability. The way you place suffering and stress on your own mind and your ability to relieve some of that, even if it's just, as one of the Forest of Johns once said, just a little fleck of bark off a tree. Even if you get that much of a defilement off your mind, okay, your mind is that much lighter. So the meditation is your business, nobody else's business. It's one of the few things in life that that's totally true about. And for many of us, that's disorienting. Everything we've done in our lives is because someone else has set down the schedule, set down the agenda. And this is your agenda. And sometimes that's a little overwhelming. But if you find yourself trying to make up excuses for why you can't do this or why you can't deal with the training, ask yourself, okay, what would you have if you didn't train? What would there be that you could fall back on? Well, 
This is all there is. So give it your all. And you won't be disappointed.